Welcome to Introduction to Finance. My name is Greg Pierce, finance coach, and uh, we're here to talk about a very exciting field uh, that will help you greatly in your business life and in your personal life. Our uh, course will focus on the uh, most popular corporate finance book in America, and that's Ross Westerfield Jordan, Fundamentals of Corporate Finance. Our course is broken up into four key topical areas that you will see, four key areas of emphasis. First of all, financial decision-making in organizations. How do we make good financial decisions in any organization, be it a corporation, a for-profit or non-profit? Uh, we're going to look at topics like um, what are the three key things on the mind of the financial manager every day? Um, we're going to look at how do you read financial statements effectively and make good decisions based on the financial statements. Um, we're going to look at key financial ratios and how can we uh, see how the company's doing based on these financial ratios. And finally, how do we do budgeting and forecasting, something that just about everyone will do in their lives, be it their personal lives or their corporate lives or organizational lives. Second key topical area, valuation of future cash flows. Uh, looking at a dollar today not being worth a dollar tomorrow. And play games like uh, who wants to be a millionaire and, and what kind of uh, deposit must I make today to have a million dollars when I retire at age 65 on a lump sum basis and on an annual cash basis. Uh, we're also going to look at financial markets and institutions, bond markets, stock markets, how to value bonds, how to value stocks. And what's gone on in history over the past 85 or so years in the financial markets? How have uh, very various investments done over the past 85 years? Finally, our fourth key topic will be investments, making large capital investments, particularly in your organization. And how do we do that effectively? We'll look at key tools like net present value, payback period, IRR, uh, OCF, and concepts like that to help us make effective uh, investment decisions. Uh, so in this session, again, we're going to use Ross Westerfield and Jordan. That's going to be our focus. In session number one, the topic is introduction to corporate finance. Our learning objectives are as follows. First of all, we're going to look at the corporate uh, financial manager. What does he or she do every day? And what's involved in corporate finance? What are the three key decisions that that financial manager makes each and every day? We're going to look at uh, types of business organization you can choose once you start a new company or in an existing company. Should I uh, form a sole proprietorship? Should I do a partnership? Should I form a corporation? And what are the uh, advantages and disadvantages of each? What's the overall goal of financial management when I go into work every day? What am I trying to do? Uh, maximize market value per share of existing stock. What's the agency problem? Can I get into an agency problem as a young person, as a middle manager, as, a, as an experience manager, a vice president or a president of a corporation? And who controls the corporation? We're going to look at that very closely. And uh, finally, our fifth learning objective in this session is financial markets. How do financial markets interact with the corporation? And um, what goes on in those transactions? And we'll look briefly at the, the various markets where we can uh, place our stocks and bonds. Uh, the story of uh, Steve Jobs and Apple ties together a lot of the concepts in this chapter very, very well. So we're going to talk for a few seconds about uh, Steve Jobs and the founding of Apple and how he's doing these days. Apple Computer was founded in 1976 in Los Altos, California. Uh, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak got together in uh, uh, the Jobs' parents' garage and uh, formed Apple Computer. Sales grew very rapidly with the Apple I, Apple II, Apple IIe in the educational market, and the Macintosh, very, very popular computers. Uh, then around 1985, about nine, ten years later, there was an industry-wide sales slump. And uh, Apple got caught in this a bit. Uh, Jobs was relieved of his um, duties. So here he was, the founder of the company, an entrepreneur, and then an executive with the company, relieved of his duties by the board of directors. Uh, and he went on to found Next Computer uh, in 1985 and Pixar when he bought the computer graphics division of Lucasfilms in 1986. And as you know, these became highly successful companies. Uh, Jobs had 7 million shares. Um, worth $120 million in 1985 when he left Apple. Apple was worth about a billion at that time. Contrast that with today when Apple has uh, several hundred million shares and uh, $250 billion in market value. It was one of the uh, highest market capitalization uh, companies in 
the United States at this time. In 1996, um, Apple was having some difficulties. So here, this is about 10 years later after Mr. Jobs had been let go. Uh, Apple bought Next Computer for about $430 million. Uh, Mr. Jobs received $200 million uh, in stock options and a Gulfstream jet, probably to fly back and forth between Pixar and uh, Apple. Uh, they needed the visionary back, and the founder was uh, offered to come back to uh, Apple Computer. Uh, today, Apple's one of America's great business success stories. Uh, you know the successes of the products that uh, Apple sells, the iPod, the iPhone, the iPad, and a countless stream of innovation. And a lot of that's thanks to uh, Mr. Jobs coming back. So you'll see a lot of these concepts in this session uh, tied together very neatly by the story of uh, Mr. Jobs, who was a uh, entrepreneur and a founder of Apple, and then an ex-employee, and then re-employed and became an executive once again at Apple Computer. So today we want to talk about what is corporate finance exactly? What um, does it involve? What are the things that are on the mind of the chief financial officer, the president of the company at all times? Number one, the, one of the first questions that is on the mind of the CFO, what long-term investments should we take on? Uh, for instance, at Walmart, this might be something like opening a new store uh, in your local area. Or do you have enough Walmart stores? How about a Sam's Club? Do we need another Sam's Club? This all falls under the category of capital budgeting. So when you hear the term capital budgeting, we're talking about property, plant, and equipment. How much property, plant, and equipment should we carry in our business? Uh, with a software company like Microsoft or Apple, I might be talking about should we develop a new operating system like Windows 7 or in Apple's case, Snow Leopard. Um, these are questions that are on the uh, CFO's mind every day. Question number two, um, where will we get the financing to build these new buildings, property, plant, and equipment, if we decide to go ahead? Uh, this question is called the capital structure question. What is capital structure? Capital structure is the mix of debt, long-term debt and equity in the firm. Equity, when we talk about equity uh, in all of these sessions, we'll be talking about stocks. And when we talk about debt, debt will come in the form of bonds and uh, sometimes in terms of uh, mortgages. Uh, generally, when we talk about stocks and bonds, we're talking about securities. So we use the, the term securities throughout uh, all these sessions. We're talking about stocks and bonds. Uh, the third decision on the mind of the uh, CFO and CEO every day or, uh, is how will I manage my everyday financial activities? Here we're talking about working capital management. Uh, if you've had an accounting course, you learn that working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. And you must, the key word here is manage. You must manage these details. When we talk about working capital, we're talking about things like cash and uh, accounts receivable, um, inventory, prepaid assets. Those are your current assets. Current liabilities are things like uh, accounts payable, notes payable, taxes payable, wages payable interest payable. And when we subtract these two, we get working capital. And this is what must be managed uh, every day by the chief financial officer and others in the company. Again, the key word, let me underscore, is manage. Manage your working capital. So those are the three questions that are on the mind of the financial manager each and every day. In this organizational chart, you see the uh, financial manager and where he or she sits in the organization. Uh, typically, the highest level is the VP of Finance reporting to the president, chief operating officer, uh, and or the chief executive officer, alongside the VP of Marketing, VP of Production, who are on the same level organizationally. Uh, two groups report to the VP of Finance, or the, the head financial manager, the treasurer and controller. The treasurer basically is responsible for cash, four-letter words starting with a C, think treasurer, think cash. That may involve managing cash, credit, capital expenditures, sometimes financial planning. Sometimes financial planning is broken out as a separate entity. Uh, also reporting to the uh, financial manager, the VP of finance or CFO is a controller. And the controller uh, does another thing starting with a C, and that is controls. Controls taxes, cost accounting, financial accounting, sometimes data processing. Sometimes you can get into a conflict of interest, and you might want to move that uh, data processing group outside to a VP of IT to avoid any conflicts of interest. Um, we see that in the past, two very famous CEOs in the organizational chart, the CEO and founder of Apple, Steve Jobs, and the CEO and founder of Microsoft, Bill Gates. Um, 
the CFO would report to both of these gentlemen. Currently at Apple, we have a new CEO. His name is Tim Cook. And the new CEO at Microsoft is Satya Nadella. Uh, 